Well, let's start off with that. Like, Jesse, I'm going to let you kind of kick it off and I'll interject as I go along. But like, talk about what well, we see a lot of people and there's different aspects of it, but there are usually maybe company drivers that want to get their own authority and want to be their own boss. So they want to go out there and start their own trucking business. We also have people out there that maybe they know someone or a business that needs trucks or has freight to move. Um, so they look into starting businesses, but then also like my friend that I mentioned, he's actually in a whole separate industry. He's in financial planning, but he had a friend that has a trucking business and he wants to invest in the trucking business. So well, the first thing with any business is study a market area. Um, with trucking, you don't want to be deadheading 150, 200 miles to get your first load out of the house. Uh, so that's the most important thing. What is in your area? What does it pay? Uh, what possibilities do you have to build your own customers outside spot freight? Uh and then uh, the next important thing is finding the capital to start it up. So you, you got to have the business and then you got to have the money and then you got to have money to make money. Yep. So Yeah. And I think that's like number one, it's just like in any business, this isn't just trucking, but it's, it's having a business plan in place. And like you said, actually knowing the market and where those opportunities lie with the trucks. And again, where that freight is, because yeah, you, you know, if someone wants to get into trucking, they got to know what opportunities they are, kind of where they're domiciled or where they're going to be moving and whether that's going to be van freight, refrigerated freight, flatbed freight, bulk freight like we do. Um, and a lot has to do with geographically where you're located. Yeah, and the business plan is the most important aspect. Uh, nine times out of ten, if you're going to a bank or a lending institution, they're going to want to see your business plan before they even think about giving you an application for a loan. So there's a lot of resources to create your business plan. The Small Business Administration has uh, 10 steps to start your business. The first thing is it, right there on the screen, conduct your market research and then build your business plan. And then right after that, funding your business. So again, it comes back to finding your money, finding your market, uh, to, close the, to close the circle. This is probably more of a, obviously a banker or financial institution question, but typically if you're, you know, if you're going to go to a bank, um, there's going to be so much money or capital that you're going to have to put down on, you know? So if yes. you're, if you're looking at trucking again, starting with one truck, you know, I'm going to use easy math, but say it's a hundred thousand dollar truck. I'm talking about a used truck, yes. not a brand new truck. Yeah, just... And then probably a 30, $40,000 trailer. And we'll talk, there's other ways too, of, of leasing and renting that. Um, but typically you're going to have to have 20% of that. Give or Easily. Take. And trucking right now is viewed as a risky industry. So it may well be more that the bank requires to in, uh, the startup put up capital. Uh, so, you know, and again, you want to go in there with a bulletproof plan. You want to go in there with a list of your customers or potential customers that you've already lined up and what resources are available to you outside of your organic customers to keep the truck rolling and keep it earning revenue. Uh, and when you're talking about equipment, you're, you got to look at the front end costs. What kind of equipment do you want? You got to look at the maintenance aspects of it. Do you go Kenworth or Freightliner or whatever brand? What, what power plant do you want under the hood? What are the problems with it? Especially with the newer engines, you have all the EPA functions of the engine that unfortunately makes downtime more frequent rather than less. Yeah. Well, that's what my, my friend that I'm going to keep referring to just because he's walked through this process. He found it was a used truck and I don't know the maker model, but I know it was 53,000, but he bought a warranty with it. And I know from experience, other guys that have done that and have actually, actually the, one of the partners at smart freight, Rachel, her husband took a route and ended up having more trouble with an older truck model versus having a newer truck model. So I, I would just say, do your homework and try to figure out, you know, less is not best when, when it comes to a semi-truck. And, you know, regarding older trucks, as time goes forward, we've seen this during the pandemic when supply chains get strained, what's going to get the higher priority, the 2001 uh, Detroit diesel for parts that has a shrinking population 
or the 2024 Cummins engine. Mm. So as time goes forward, getting those parts for the older engines will become more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So we talked about that in and one last thing I was going to ask on the financial lending and you may or may not know this, Jesse, like are there certain banks that are more apt or have more of an appetite for lending to trucking companies or is it more just going to your local bank and seeing what they could provide or, or opportunities that they have? Probably your first stop should be your local bank. My experience is smaller banks actually will have more of an appetite to lend to a trucking company because it's there. It comes down to relationships if you already have a relationship with your bank. So you already got somewhat of a trust factor there. Start there. There are out bigger institutions that will lend the trucking companies a uh, Anchor Finance comes to mind right off the top of the head. That they, I want to say exclusively loans to trucking companies, but a big portion of their business is trucking. And while we're talking on the banking, you know, obviously it's one thing to get a loan for the asset itself to be on the road, but also uh, talk about a little bit about the cash flow aspect of it, or just having a credit line because it's one thing you you know you got the truck purchased. But as many people do know or maybe don't know, like there's a lot of fuel tied up that you got to have, a lot of costs up front before you're ever getting one one dollar of income off that truck. Yeah, and just starting with the receivables, if you're doing everything on your own, uh, some customers will pay faster within 72 hours to a week. Others are usually between net 14 and net 30, so you have to have enough cash to support your operation throughout all those vagaries or an invoice gets messed up or a ho- something goes in hold status, it gets lost in the mail. You don't want to be so totally dependent on your receivables revenue that at the end of the week you're rolling pennies to see if you're going to operate the next week. Yeah. And is there a, is there a mathematical equation to know how much you need to have in cash on hand? I mean, per truck? One week's operating cost. One week's operating Bare cost. Bare minimum. Okay. Otherwise, you are literally sweating from day to day. Am I going to be operate? Am I going to be able to fuel this truck? Am I going to be able to pay my driver? So, yeah, at least one week. I mean, preferably a month. You know, on a personal level, they always recommend you have six months' income stashed away. Good luck with that in the trucking business. I doubt even the mega carriers have that kind of a reserve.